Hello and welcome to an introduction, brief introduction to Whirligig uh, 4 and this is from a clean installation as if you've just installed it from the Oculus, Viveport or Steam stores. So I'm going to double click on the icon on the desktop. First time you run it you'll get a, you'll get a update screen about uh, telling you all about the different features that have been added to the latest version. Uh, if I update it then this screen will come back but this is the only time you'll see it for this version so if I click left click with a mouse or multiple other versions so okay so here we are this is the uh, main thing that you'll see uh, when you first start Whirly Gig. now uh, this is the main UI uh, this is actually an image just giving you a little brief overview and having something for you to see when you first start it up uh, of course the first thing you want to do is uh, go and uh, open a video I can imagine. I'm actually going to press F11 here and this actually makes it full screen so it's a bit easier for to within the tutorial to actually demonstrate stuff. So there are many ways in which to control Whirligig as well so I'm, I'm using the Oculus at the moment so if I put the headset on and I pick up the controllers you can see the controllers are there within the headset. Now if I put the controllers down as soon as they're no longer active it goes to the head mounted display and uh, if I move the mouse it will work with the mouse. Uh, this is useful obviously depends on which uh, setup you've got. I'm going to use the mouse to demonstrate Whirly Gig here because it's the easiest thing for me to do while sat in front of my computer. Uh, so I'm just going to put those over there wait for them to disappear as they go. Um, when you're using the controllers it's the trigger button is select uh, the mouse is the left button uh, left button on the mouse to select and on the keyboard it's spacebar or enter on the uh, gamepad it's A. Uh, those are the default setup. So let's first let's have a look and open up our first media file. So I'm going to click here this brings up the explorer and it tells you the location there which is actually in the save file uh, folder. So I'm going to go up all the way to C drive the root of C drive so this is the root of my C drive and go into media Going to go into videos. Uh, your videos might be somewhere else, a uh, different location, but this is where my videos are uh, for this demonstration. So, a variety of different videos. Uh, I'm going to open the Big Buck Bunny one. So, you just click on it. And like I say, you can do that with uh, all the different controls, but I'm using the mouse at the moment. So, that's loaded up automatically uh, and it sits on the first frame before you hit play. And if I hit play, as you can see, it started up there. Now, the actual image file that is a, a, is a demonstration when you first start up Whirly Gig is actually a 360 degree barrel. And whenever you load another video, it use, and it's the first time you've loaded that video, it uses the settings from the previous video. So, this isn't a 360 degree barrel, this is a standard cinema um, 16 by 9. So, if I click on cinema here, it turns it to cinema. And uh, it's 16 by 9 here because it will automatically detect what actual resolution, uh, what aspect ratio the video is at. And as you can see, it's uh, 16 by 9. Uh, so I can then click here and work my way through, like so. If I put, hit play, so, uh, so play, and it continues to play. Pause. Now, if I click outside of the actual menu system anywhere where it goes red anywhere where the crosshair goes red then the menu will disappear and it will just play and then when it's playing if I click I want to say click it's select trigger all those different buttons um, the menu will return so that's how to play and uh, your first video now you see you've got quite a few settings here now these allow you to change the uh, certain things to make it nicer viewing experience for you or depending on the different videos that you're using so in cinema you have scale tilt distance and stretch uh, as I said earlier the actual video when loaded in will automatically detect the actual aspect ratio ratio of it but if it's got it wrong you can simply click here and you can change it to um, a number there, so relatively arbitrary number, but hopefully it should give you. Uh, you can eyeball it uh, and get it the amount that you want. If you if you've got it wrong, you want to set it back to zero. You can just hit hit there. Uh, the distance is this is in a 3D space, so this is pushes the distance away from you, and these are actually in relative meters, so that's 24 meters away from you or three meters in front of you, like so. 
scale is the actual size of the actual screen so that's not distance that's actually the size of the screen so that'll make it much larger looking and that'll bring it further away like so so these are the general settings you can go beyond these settings uh, if you want to so you can do that but it'll these are the ones within a average parameter now I've mucked around it tilt allows you to tilt it up and down uh, that can be more useful in something like barrel or fisheye and uh, it can be useful in uh, in cinema because if uh, if you want to say for instance sit back and have it kind of facing upwards uh, leaning back then you could do that so let's say I've screwed up all of the settings uh, I don't know what's going on it's a little bit weird I can just hit the resets on these settings here and it will take me back to a kind of average setting and that's how you can uh, how you can uh, play your video and adjust your video to however you like. Cinema Curved is the same, but it's just slightly curved to cinema, like so. And um, for cinema, that's pretty much it within that. Uh, now, I let's say, for instance, I want to play another video, but I haven't finished watching this one. I can hit Save, select a slot, hit Save, and it saves the location of the film and the uh, time of the film, and then when I've saved it, I click off, like so. I can now open up another video. So I'm going to open a video now by a friend called Aaron Bradbury called Vortex. Now Vortex, I know from the uh, from when I downloaded it that it's a fisheye 180 degree uh, side by side video. Uh, I'm going to switch it to. I'm going to actually leave it in cinema because it's it doesn't it'll appear like that. And you can see there it's starting, it looks a little circular, uh, but it's got a black edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the theme just to blue. Just to make it obvious that it's, uh, it's two by it's two by one fish eye. You can see there's two. You can see there's two images there, so it's a stereo. Most likely to be a stereo. So if I click there, so if I click on fish eye, so that's currently mono. And down here, there's the depth. If I click there, that's side by side, and you can tell it's side by side because of the icon. So you've got side by side images in the icon. Now if I click on it again, that's over under to demonstrate that there, and click on it again, it's mono, just one in the middle. So it's side by side, and there you go. So that's a side by side fisheye. If I look at it in the headset, I can see that it's 3D. Um, it's actually a 3D image. I'm going to use to next. My headset's just in my lap here, um, and. So I also know it's a roughly 45 degrees. So I can do that or I can do it, I want to do it a little bit more. There we go. So that is set up and ready to play. And I again can play that. Now I've taken a little while to set this up. So say for instance, I've got lots of videos like this and I want, to, uh, I want to save that preset. I can click on preset, click there, click save, and that saves the preset. So this saves not the video, but the actual settings for the video. And so I can return to that whenever I want to. So if I now go back, uh, just as an example, now, now I can save this as well. I'll, I'll save that while I'm here. Dink, save, save. So I've got two in there now. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my uh, Big Black Bunny. Actually, now I'll go back to the loaded Big Black Bunny just to demonstrate that. Oh, dink, dink. There we are. So that's loaded it back in its original position. So if I was going to load another video, let's say for instance I load uh, Cosmos Laundromat first cycle, it hasn't been loaded yet. So it will load and take all the settings on from this video. So if I hit load there, that's now, it's still cinema, it's still set to these. And I can go through like so. And I could save the preset if I wanted. Now, if I'd loaded this and I thought, oh, this is a fisheye, this is like a fisheye that I want all the others to be like, I could just click on there and click load fisheye and it loads all the fisheye settings. So that's all the previous fisheye settings, including the background that's selected. It saves pretty much everything um so you can save all those presets and get those working uh, and that's the general setup of how to load and play and save videos and uh, and uh, play uh, play back all of the things that you want to play back uh, something else that you can do is you can also play images so if i go into here i go up one go to images that's a doggy welcome uh, i use that preset why not 
node. There they are. So there you go. And I could uh, I could go to the next one in the image sequence and the next one like so. So those are just going through my different images. Again, those can be easily saved um, or cleared. So let's say there's a few other things I'd like to briefly go over. Uh, um, let me go back to Big Bug Bunny. It's nice and bright. So I go back to Big Bug Bunny. So there's a few other options. So you've got the cinema curved, which I said earlier, which curves the cinema, or the cinema like that, or barrel, which is often used for um, 360 degree videos. Uh, all the YouTube videos are barrel, um, and you can uh, pretty much uh, guarantee that 90% of the 3D videos that you download about it's often called equi rectangular or panoramic um, so that's that's that one fisheye is often used for full dome films uh, uh, films that have been rendered directly from the camera and with here you've got um, a multitude of different degrees that you can you can use like so like so barrel has two barrel has 360 and 180 so it's only two at the moment, I'm afraid. But um, I may well add some in the future once I work out what the others are supposed to look like. Um, so custom format. Now there are a variety of different formats for 360 degree films. Uh, custom format allows you to... Uh... Okay, I'm just demonstrating the different formats. So let's look at the other ones that we've got here. We've mentioned barrel, we've mentioned fisheye. There's also custom format, which if I click on custom format here, um, now there's a variety of different custom formats that can be cho cho uh, can be made um, using made yourself or uh, have got a variety that have already been listed in here. So 360 degree films come in quite a variety of different formats. The common are barrel and fisheye, which is standard, but then there's lots of other ones like cube maps and uh, horizontal cube maps and vertical cube maps. So if I click on here, you can see that there's quite a lot of different choices here, and this can be expanded on. So if there's certain cameras that have been set up with certain fisheyes, you can select one of these options and you'll get something that will work for you. So, for instance, the Panasonic A500 RAW format is this kind of like weird format like this. So anything that comes out of a, a Panasonic 360 camera, a Panasonic uh, A500 uh, camera, you can use the RAW footage directly in there, and that's the custom formats. Uh, the other thing that you've got is rooms. So at the moment, we're watching the film within a void. Um, I briefly tapped on the... Uh, themes which is also available here um, but uh, so I could for instance click on there and that would be within a uh, within a nice background like that um, but what I am going to look at here is a thing called rooms so if I click on rooms now what rooms provides is a way in which to uh, view it within uh, an environment so at the moment this environment here is like a living room. Now this looks very dark on the monitor. It looks very probably looks very dark on your um on your uh, uh, preview screen. But uh, within the headset, this is pretty bright. I wanted to keep the darkness down so it wasn't too uh, too glaring, so you could watch the film quite comfortably. And what we have is a big television within that environment. Um, and you can see that it's kind of a little a little living room. And there's a few here. There's one called drive-in cinema where you're sat in a car. Uh, we've got bedroom where you're sat on in bed in a bedroom uh, cinema screen which is you're inside a cinema screen a big kind of like personalized cinema screen uh, dome flat so if you're doing dome productions i want to see your film within a dome a flat dome then you've got that so far there and you've got dome tilted which is you're inside a tilted dome uh, also good for productions or if you get any any planetarium shows or anything like that you can use that the only option on here is stretch because that's the only one that actually makes sense in fact in dome and dome flat it doesn't make sense either uh, so it was, doesn't do anything within there but in here it does does do that if I reset that there now this is 69 so it fits nicely in there um, so that's the uh, that's all of the major features uh, I'm going to click back to cinema now um, I'll just very briefly go all of the other uh, over all the other features. So you can see that there's a lot of buttons down here. 
Uh, so if we go into settings, there's a variety of different uh, settings that you can set. Like you can disable the mouse support or you can glue to glue UI. So that'll glue the UI to the headset. So it always appears in front of, the, in front of you. Um, you can uh, glue projection as well. So that does the same thing. So it actually glues the whole projection to you. So you could look directly up and down. So I turn those two off. You got mirror display, so I could switch off the mirror display. It's background glow, which can kind of gives you a glow within that, and that actually is dynamically lit by that. It's a, it, it kind of gives a dark glow for brighter backgrounds, but if, for instance, I change that to black, you can see that there's kind of an edge glow to it. So if I play that there, it kind of takes that a little bit. Um, what else have we got? We've got loops, subtitles. You can switch subtitles on and off depending on if you've got uh, subtitle support within there. Subtitle reverse reverses the direction of the subtitles, so that's good for um, for other languages that use a uh, right to left subtitle system, uh, right to left right to left language system rather than left to right. Uh, you can have it automatically proceed to the next uh, film after it ends or play on load, uh, so it automatically loads when the actual video is there uh, plays. Uh, automatically plays when the video loads. You can switch off the uh, VR support. So if I uh, do that and then that, this is just using the mouse now. And I will have a video specifically on that when I get a chance. Um, custom skip is one of the formats, uh, one of the options within the uh, actual uh, joy uh, gamepad and also the custom areas as well. Uh, we've got general, which is general two, so stereo separation. If your stereo doesn't feel quite right, you can normally adjust it and get something nice there. Super sampling improves the super sampling. You can play back video, uh, change the video speed, so you can have it play back much quicker, which works better on some videos than others. It actually tends to be very reliant on, uh, on the actual video itself. So if it's high compression, it'll, it'll won't play back very well, but this one slowed down is much easier. So there you go. Um, we have adjustment, which is all the adjustments within one menu. Uh, video path, so we have different video paths. So direct show, I, I prefer direct show. I think it's the best video path. But media foundation is very good, and the video LAN is also useful. There's a little description of each one to show you what, uh, what the best things are. And then you've got lots of other menus in here, which is a selection of different menus that aren't within this normal menu option. Um, just to go over a couple of the other menu options, we've got adjust, we can change the saturation, brightness, running through this pretty quickly, and like so, and they will also get saved in the settings and quickly reset them, dink, 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 like so. Um, and devices uh, allows you to change all of the input devices, so you've got gamepad, touch, five, keyboard, and it will, you can change all of the uh, all of the shortcuts for these so you can completely customize these as well as that if you look in the touch there you can actually change to different controllers so that's a general overview of whirly gig i hope you enjoy it i hope you find it useful uh, if i've missed something uh, important please let me know uh, if you like it please give some nice reviews um, if you have suggestions or ways in which i can improve it uh, also please let me go let me know a lot of these uh, options are there from people who uh, requested stuff and i thought it was a good idea to put it in so thank you i hope you uh, i hope you enjoy using it and look forward to your feedback thank you very much